Hello everyone, my name is Manolis Finaralakis, the founder and producer of Reality Crowd TV, and welcome to a special episode of Reality Crowd TV Crowdfunding Hangouts. We are teaming up with the Boston area RIA to present to you real estate crowdfunding with our special guests from patchaland.com, a debt-based real estate lending marketplace. So before we actually introduce everyone on our panel today, and we have a bunch of great guests, I just wanted to go through a couple of ground rules for all the viewers on the show. We have a Q&A application that if you follow the circle of Reality Crowd TV on Google+, you'll be able to submit any questions that you might want at any time for any of our guests or for anyone on the show. Additionally, all the information for our guests are included within the Google Plus event copy, including patchaland.com, the website of our guests, and bostonarea.com, which is the host of this webinar. Uh, I want to say um, that we are, we unfortunately do not have Bernadette Trafton on with us. She had, a, unfortunately, a death in the family, and, and our hearts go out to her and her family during this tough time. But Bernadette really cared so much about the real estate uh, education that we were going to provide that she, she said we should still go on with the webinar. So we, we want to just say to Bernadette, you know, we love you and, and uh, we, we support you during this time of need. Uh, and thank you for still allowing us to have this webinar. Um, so now that, we, uh, now that we got the ground rules out of the way, I'd like to introduce my co-host, uh, Jessica Sun, the CEO of Reality Crowd TV. Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. I hope you enjoy another one of our real estate webinars. Um, it should be very much informational for you. Um, feel free to ask as many questions as you want. I know this is a very hot topic right now, so hope you enjoy the show. Excellent. And, uh, and we're actually lucky to have a returning guest, but we also have a new guest as well. So we have our, our returning guest, Jason Fritton, the co-founder and president of Patch of Land. And uh, Jason, can you please introduce yourself to the audience? Hi, everyone. My name is Jason Fritton. I'm president and COO of Patch of Land. It's uh, great to be here. Uh, thank you again for uh, having me, Manolis and Jessica. It's great to speak with you again. Our, our pleasure. Our pleasure, Jason. Thank you again for joining us. And, uh, and you also have someone with you who's a very integral part of your operation. We have Doug Cochran, the head underwriter and head of client development. So, Doug, pleasure to have you on board, and uh, please introduce yourself. Uh, thanks for having me on, and I uh, just want to say thank you to everybody um, for the opportunity to uh, be part of this, and I uh, look forward to uh, answering any questions that may arise during the, during the uh, session. Excellent. Thank you, Doug. So uh, for the viewers on the line, I actually wanted to just uh, have a little bit of a level set. Uh, most people know crowdfunding with the rewards-based model, which is a donation in exchange for a reward. Uh, that is the Kickstarter model, that's the Indiegogo model. What we're talking about here is real estate crowdfunding, which is going on in a uh, completely different model because now we're dealing with lending. We're actually dealing with money being exchanged for a return on investment secured by a piece of property. So essentially, uh, with, the, with the new laws that have been passed, the 2012 Jobs Act, there is now equity and debt-based crowdfunding, and the reason why it's important that we're talking about real estate at the moment is because real estate crowdfunding seems to be one of the hottest, if not the hottest, sector in the equity and debt-based crowdfunding model. Our guests today are specifically focused on debt-based crowdfunding, and, uh, and Jason, can you, can you explain to us a little bit about uh, what, how are you using the 2012 Jobs Act and explain what Patch of Land does? Sure. So Patch of Land at its core is a real estate crowdfunding firm that works with established developers, real estate professionals in a particular geography uh, to make great projects actually happen. So we don't actually uh, you know, manage real estate on our end. We just provide funding to the pros who know what they're, they're actually doing. And then what we actually do is we bring together the, uh, the real estate professionals and interested investors who may not have access to real estate investment on their own, the time or the experience necessary to, to handle a real estate project themselves, but who are interested in you know, what has historically been one of the most lucrative areas of, of uh, investment out there. Um, we bring them together in, in a completely online, transparent way, and we, we make those projects actually 
We utilized the Jobs Act, uh, the 2012 Jobs Act, uh, specifically through a Regulation D 506C offering. And basically, all that says is we're able, for the first time in about 80 years, to take actual investments where you can expect it to receive a return on your money um, and bring it out in a completely public, transparent, online way uh, to our clients. Uh, in the past, you've never actually been able to. Uh, publicly raise funds for private placements. You could do so in, you know, in a, a, an IPO, um, but those can cost you know, hundreds of thousands of dollars or millions of dollars actually uh, to get through and requires uh, extremely extensive SEC registration. Um, so that, that doesn't really work when you're talking about individual properties. And there might be a $200,000 property that, that could be worth $300,000 with a little bit of tender loving care. But obviously, you can't do a million dollar IPO to raise uh, uh, funds for that. So, what the 2012 Jobs Act allows us to do then is to, um, with under certain restrictions, so we have to work with accredited investors, it allows us to publicly go out to the crowd and raise small amounts of investment from individual investors and to be very open about what we're actually doing. Um, and uh, you know, there's pros and, and cons to that, but, but we feel that the advantages are, are overwhelming. We're able to use the wisdom of the crowd and the, uh, you know, the power of, of online media to actually democratize capital formation. And uh, a lot of these developers who may not have access to a lot of capital on a regular basis are now able to go out to people who may believe in their projects and, and make it happen through, through small commitments that combined together makes a, 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 a big um, project actually happen. Excellent, and um, and so th this is very interesting. So you you mentioned Rule 506, which is Title II equity crowdfunding, and Title II is one of the seven provisions in the 2012 Jobs Act. And that specific provision, as you mentioned, anyone any real estate developer can bring a deal to your platform. So the the accredited investor guidelines do not apply to the developer bringing the deal to your platform. They apply to the individuals investing in the developer's project through your platform. Is that is that correct? That's correct. So the developers who and we operate on the debt side as opposed to the equity side. Um, so we're able to actually provide funding to any developer. They don't have to be already wealthy or accredited to, to receive funding. Uh, they just have to meet our requirements and that they're experienced in, in their particular area, in their particular asset class. And they've shown a strong track record and a credible borrower. Um, the accredited status needs to apply to the investors themselves. Um, and unfortunately, that's a limitation placed on us by the SEC at this time. We're hoping that that changes very uh, uh, soon here in the future when Regulation 8 Plus comes out, uh, potentially Title III, though that's less likely, and, and uh, you know, additional uh, regulatory vehicles here in the future. But for the time being, our investors have to be accredited. So if they invest into a project, they have to, to meet the requirements of being an accredited investor. Um, in a simplified way, that means that they have to have made $200,000 per year for the past two years and have a reasonable expectation of doing so this year or have a net worth uh, excluding the primary residence of a million dollars a month. Absolutely. And, um, and so, and, and actually, there, there is some other interesting developments, even on the accredited investor front. Uh, you were actually quoted in Forbes recently. Uh, regarding the, the current debate uh, that the Securities and Exchange Commission is having, the SEC, specifically on re-examining what it means to be an accredited investor. So as of right now, it's, um, you know, there, there's about 8.7 million people that, that qualify as accredited. Those people who make 200000 a year or are worth a million in net worth, excluding a personal residence. But the SEC is looking to adjust that now for inflation and, um, and a lot of people believe that it's not necessary, and it would actually cause uh, a lot of people to not qualify as accredited anymore. So, what what are your thoughts on that? What, what, how were you quoted on that on that particular issue? Right, and, and that's exactly right. The the SEC is under pressure to come back to the accredited uh, the standards to be accredited, um, simply because they haven't been adjusted in a while, and and perhaps uh, two hundred thousand today isn't what it was back in, in the seventies. The original idea behind putting these protections in place was that the idea that if a person already has money, um, the chances are that they are sophisticated enough uh, to be able to make smart investment decisions and that they are able to absorb a loss. Um, 
And uh, so those, those minimum criteria were put into, in, into place um, a while ago. Now the SEC is saying, hey, it's been a while. You know, let's take another look at the, these and see if we need to increase them, perhaps, to $400,000 uh, per year as far as the income is concerned, perhaps two $5 million on the net worth requirement. I personally don't agree with that um, for several different reasons. And, and this is uh, how it's quoted actually in Forbes, is that I, you know, there, there are a lot of folks out there that are very sophisticated and very knowledgeable about investments, perhaps they're traders, uh, you know, and perhaps they've just been very active in, in uh, the investment community, um, and perhaps they're not already wealthy. In, in, in our current environment, our current culture right now, we're, we're very connected. Um, we have a, a, enormous sources of information where we didn't have in, in the 70s and the 60s. And, and I feel that there's an, a, a complete disconnect between a person's sophistication on any subject and how much money they have in their pocket. Um, I, I don't believe that you can actually draw any real connection there. So I, I believe that that limiting what a person can do with his or her own money by how much money they already have um, is ridiculous. There, there are a lot of great opportunities out there and a lot of great projects that people may already believe in. Uh, that they want to take part of, uh, even up to a certain amount, and, and they simply cannot because the government is saying, hey, we're, we're making the decision for you that you are not smart enough or experienced enough or wise enough or sophisticated enough to be able to make that decision for yourself outside of, say, an IPO or a publicly traded option or having somebody else do it for you. On the other side, as far as being able to absorb a loss, you know, if you're an accredited investor already and you're there's no real limits um, to what you can invest currently in, in a Regulation D or a private placement. Um, so you can still, if you wanted to, um, you know, lose everything on an enforcement investment decision. Um, so just putting a minimum net worth doesn't really protect that by any means. On top of that, uh, I mean, people have the ability to make poor decisions every day. Uh, they could blow their money on lottery tickets, which is, you know, as you know, a terrible, terrible investment decision as it is, and that's perfectly legal. But if you want, they wanted to invest in, say, their their niece's project uh, somewhere in a different state, um, they wanted to put in money like that. Technically, it's it's not legal unless they're already wealthy, and, and that's not right, in my in my opinion. Um, so I don't believe that as the SEC is looking at accredited standards here and changing the accredited standards that they should go up at least on the net income. I think if anything, if they're going to tighten the protections at all, they should maybe put a max ceiling on what any individual can invest into any in, uh, single project uh, to uh, absorb the potential of loss. Um, but even at that point, I mean, the, um, the wisdom of the crowd has been very, very powerful. We've been able to see this in the crowdfunding industry time and time again. Uh, the, you have thousands of people looking at an individual project there is a huge ability to sniff out fraud. There is a huge ability to sniff out weaknesses in the business plan. Um, and uh, the, the ability to stay connected, both through social media, through online, through forums, through the back and forth on it and the individual platforms themselves, the questions that are being asked, people have the ability to be very informed. Um, and just like any investment, there is always the chance that you may lose some or all of your, your funds. And that is a risk that, uh, that people should be able to take and, and, and uh, um, be able to make that decision for themselves any more than the amount of cash they may carry into a casino. Uh, I know that sounds terrible that investment shouldn't be just blind gambling. Um, but people do have the ability to make those decisions nowadays too. They should be able to make decisions with their money um, in, in a smarter sense as well. Absolutely. Compared to like a casino, for example, you can put $10,000 in a slot machine, for example, and you don't have to be a accredited investor. But you'd be i brought up a really good point about the limits, so maybe the SEC should make rules such that depending on your income, you have certain brackets that you should achieve, you can actually put money up to. So instead of saying, no, you have to make this amount of money, you sh they should say, no, if you make maybe a $10,000 income, you can put X percent of it in, instead of saying, no, you have to make $200,000 a year. So. I mean, there are a great deal uh, of us that are in this industry right now that are learning almost everything there is to know about investing, um, at least in the small time period that we've had, um, that can make good investment decisions, but perhaps we don't have a great deal of money already, um, but we're, we're precluded from, from investing, and, and that does make a lot of sense. Um, Absolutely. Agreed. And um, 
And so we're we're going to bring Doug in in a moment because we're going to uh, we're going to begin actually going through and showing exactly how it works on your platform. And um, for for the members who might be from Boston area, um, what uh, what I also want to share with you, although currently the the other side of the uh, crowdfunding isn't passed yet, what what we're talking about today is the accredited investor. Uh, crowdfunding the Rule 506C, which is general solicitation of accredited investors. But I wanted to just quickly mention that there's two other highly anticipated regulations coming out from the government, from the Securities and Exchange Commission. One of them is Title III crowdfunding, which is the crowdfunding exemption. And this is where actually they're opening it up to unaccredited investors, meaning anyone regardless of income will soon be able to invest in a real estate property either debt or equity uh, the developer will only be able to raise a million a year under title three equity the investors depending on their income will be able to invest certain amounts per year uh, if you make under a hundred thousand you can invest up to five thousand if you if you make over a hundred thousand you can invest up to one hundred thousand uh, and there are some percentages in there as well so for those from the Boston RIA you, you might be thinking to yourselves, why do I care about general solicitation of accredited investors? Well, you should care because it's paving the way for unaccredited investors to come through. All the early participants in the accredited investor side, um, they are learning a lot from how this is working on the accredited investor side. And I'd imagine that soon, all the established players will also go into the market for the unaccredited investors as well. Um, and as we mentioned earlier, as a real estate developer, if you in the Boston RIA want to put, bring a project to the patch of land platform, you can go and put your real estate rehab fix and, fix, fix and flip project on their platform now. You don't have to be wealthy to do it. It's only the investors who have to be wealthy to invest in these deals. So just a quick little, uh, quick little thing for patch of land, go to patchofland.com and submit a developer application as soon as you can. Uh, and with that note, um, Doug, uh, I will switch it over to you. And uh, would you like me to actually uh, go to that real estate project and you could kind of lead us through it? Uh, sure, yeah, if you'd like to, that'd be great. Sure, also, yeah. I just want to say to the, uh, uh, the Boston people that uh, Boston is near and dear to my heart. I just uh, moved out to Los Angeles. I was living in Boston for the last 25 years. Uh, so, and got my background in real estate in, in the Boston area, so I'm very familiar with with the area, so please submit your submit your projects. Sounds great. Sounds great. Uh, and so let's uh, let's go through this project. And we do have questions, and I will definitely get to those questions shortly. I just want to go through this demonstration first, and then we'll head to the questions right after. Many of them might be solved uh, with this demonstration. Sure. So Doug, uh, take it away whenever you're ready. Uh, so th this uh, project we um, uh, we just launched. This is a uh, new construction uh, project down in the Florida Keys. Uh, the uh, borrower had already uh, he approached us. He already purchased the land uh, for about forty thousand dollars. It was two pieces of land next to each other, um, uh, undeveloped, and um, uh, he'd already. Uh, put about sixty thousand dollars into uh, the betterments of the property, uh, as far as putting in the uh, the pilings, and the first floor deck, and the exterior walls, all made of concrete. Uh, <clears throat> and he came to us looking for uh, money to uh, finish the project, uh, approximately one hundred and forty thousand dollars to do so. Um, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, we have an uh, ARV um, of 500,000, uh, so we have uh, overall LTV very low, 28%. Um, you know, we did a full appraisal of the property, uh, we did, um, uh, extracted the land value, a very thorough appraisal of that. Um, the developer himself uh, has a background, he has a, he's a um, construction engineer. I uh, know a, uh, a construction company, an engineer uh, design build company, um, uh, mostly in the uh, Tampa area. Uh, and this property he's going to uh, develop and hold as a rental property. Um, 
uh, in order to do so, once he's finished with his uh, with the construction, he will be refinancing into a conventional loan. Um, uh, that's a so that's interesting. So this was actually um, this was actually he owned the land, and you were. Did, did, did he own the land already, or are you funding the acquisition of the land plus the rehab costs? No, he already he already purchased the land uh, for cash, forty thousand dollars, and then also put in about sixty thousand uh, in its to its current state. Oh, excellent! So on the on the uh, the breakdown. <coughs> excuse me. Uh, uh, breakdown shows that uh, the land purchase was forty thousand. Uh, cost of, uh, construction cost to date was about sixty thousand. It's about sixteen percent complete as is, um, and uh, but he has a remaining about one hundred forty thousand uh, dollars in construction uh, for the property. Um, it's a uh, large property. It's about thirty six hundred square feet, four bedrooms, two and a half bathrooms. Uh, it's up on uh, uh, pilings. Uh, it's about seventeen feet above. Um, Sea level, and um, uh, it's like I said, it'll be a vacation rental property um, uh, for the developer once he's done. Great, and so he, um, so he, uh, this is a 12-month loan, and he's going to refinance after the 12 months. Uh, he does have, yeah, uh, that, that's the plan. Uh, we did give him a uh, uh, provision in his terms that he can extend it for an additional six months. Uh, with a request, uh, just based on uh, how much more time he needs to, uh, at that time, most likely getting it refinanced into a conventional loan. He should be done easily within 12 months for construction purposes. Great. And, um, you know, what, one thing I really like here, I'm, I'm looking on the side, I see the documents. You have the appraisal, you have the, all these things, and um, as a former auditor, you know, all this stuff was kept behind closed doors. You guys are, are putting it out in the open and being very transparent and open so that anyone who wants to potentially invest in this will be able to make the best informed decision. So not only are you transparent, but you guys are, are doing a, a, a good deal of education on top of it. You know, even if, even if you're, you're someone who is not an accredited investor and, and you can't invest in these deals, your platform would be good just for education purposes to see what a good deal looks like and see what goes into the the, the various stages because everything is out in the open. So kudos to you guys. I, I think it's brilliant what you're doing there. Thank you. Thank you. I, that, that, that is a big uh, part of our motto is, is transparency, uh, both uh, for our investors and for our borrowers. And uh, as I'm, I, I work a lot with the, uh, the borrowers, uh, it, during the process, and I'm always telling them about transparency uh, on both sides, and uh, it's a it's a it's a learning uh, curve for our, for our borrowers um, because we do they're not used to having their projects put out onto the web and, and open for um, uh, for view, and uh, that's part of the education that I bring uh, with with the underwriting and, and developing a relationship with the developers, which is something that we're we strongly uh, uh, advocate for is to build strong relationships because what we want to do is have our developers come back with, with uh, a second, a third, a fourth project. And in doing so, the more uh, transparent they are with, with their information, their background, um, uh, our investors get to know them on the site. Uh, and again, that helps build relationships. Uh, we've had a, a couple of developers who've had uh, multiple uh, projects on the site, and our investors are getting to know them and wanting to invest in their projects again and again. Um, so yeah, we, we do we put everything uh, possible on the sites. We have uh, in this particular deal uh, down in, in Florida Keys, we do have the uh, all the building uh, uh, plans and specs, uh, the breakdown of costs, the uh, um, a link to the, the developer's uh, business website for his uh, construction firm. Um, uh, 
the appraisal. Uh, obviously, we always we always have a third independent third party appraisal on all our properties. Again, for transparency and to show that, in fact, uh, you know it is a fair appraisal. Uh, in, in regards to the appraisals, we also like to get an as-is value and a subject-to value. As-is value meaning uh, what the property is currently worth in its current state, and the subject-to value based on the plans and specs or the building uh, 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 construction budget and what the property will be worth after construction. Uh, again, shows transparency, shows uh, safety uh, of the investment uh, for investors. Um, and uh, just gives a, a better overall uh, picture of the uh, of the project itself, and we put that the, the entire uh, appraisal on the site as well for everybody to view. And if they have questions, they certainly uh, come to me for for questions on, on anything that happens with the uh, project. Uh, we're always open to and willing to talk to our our investors, or our borrowers on those things. Absolutely. You know, this is a typical um, uh, appraisal, uh, uniform standard appraisal practice. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, we do focus highly on the income, of, uh, excuse me, the uh, sales comparison approach, um, as that does uh, lend the most weight uh, when um, evaluating a property. And again, with the as is value and the subject to value. This particular property didn't have an as is value. Well, it did have an as is value. Uh, but it was extracted. Uh, the, the appraiser extracted that from um, uh, the uh, current land value and uh, uh, the 16 percent of the improvements. Uh, she did an excellent job and really thoroughly broke it down. Uh, Great. And um, and so this is uh, this is excellent. Uh, it's it is literally wide open. And and Doug, as as the head underwriter, uh, the the process with patch of land. Another another reason why it's um, it's beneficial to the investors to have someone like yourself, uh, you know, being the head of the underwriting team. This isn't just an investment. Like not all investments, and in fact, I'm sure most investments do not qualify uh, because maybe they just, you know, they, the risk profile of the investments might just be too high. So, you know, it's uh, it's important to have a team like yourself who really is only putting on projects that you personally back and and actually tell us about the whole backing mechanism you um you you guys tend to pre-fund the deals for the developers and take on the risk so you you take on the full risk because you're so confident of the actual investment that you then go out and crowdfund it afterwards is that is that accurate uh that is accurate uh we uh, when, once we feel that uh <clears throat> we can approve a project and uh, get it to close we want the the developer to get the work right away, uh, so we do in fact uh, pre-fund all the deals uh, at the closing table, and then put together a um, uh, presentation like this on the on the property, and, and then uh, open it up to our investors to invest. So uh, the beauty of that is, is we're not waiting for our investors to fully fund the deals, and then have the developers go ahead and be able to to uh, get to work. Uh, it's a it's a great advantage for our Developer partners, our investors like it too because um, they have the ability to start earning interest as soon as they invest, as opposed to committing a certain amount of funds and then waiting for a project to perhaps fund or not fund, or you know uh, perhaps stall out over a period of days or weeks or even months. You know, if, if an investor invests in one of our projects, they know it's going to move forward. Uh, they're able to get interest by the date that's listed on the uh, the project itself, and um, um, they they like that as well. So. In general, we have our, our money where our mouth is. Uh, our developers love it. Uh, so it's definitely a competitive advantage for us. Our investors like it. Uh, you know, there's there's less uh, uncertainty. So it's been very powerful for us. Absolutely. And uh, and just to kind of do a quick overview, just to kind of show people how easy it is uh, to, to as a developer, you know, you you go to the borrowers tab, you click get started now, and suddenly you just gotta fill in this uh, this application. Wow, you guys actually made it even even more simple, huh? <laughs> yeah. Wow. yeah, we, we, we that, staged it out. That 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 page is is uh, to open an account, and then it'll bring you to oh, uh, your submittal page. <laughs> okay, my my, <laughs> I, was, 
I was going to say, what happened there? That just got real easy. <laughs> give us your name. Give us your name and, and <laughs> give us your name and email, and we'll give you a loan, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know. I was going to say, man, this is awesome. <laughs> but uh, no, I, I hear you. Uh, I I guess I must not be logged into my developer account, but. Uh, but yeah, I mean, basically, you go here as a borrower, sign up to get in there, and then uh, and then you'll be able to submit everything you need. Um, let me ask you guys this: uh, you know, you you we were talking beforehand, and, and you guys have been telling me just just give the audience an indication of how how big is real estate crowdfunding. I mean, tell us like what your last month has been like, how much tr how much deal flow have you had, and tell us what your current month looks like. It'll give it'll give our audience an indication of how quickly real estate crowdfunding is catching on. Sure. So I mean, as you know, we're we're still a startup. We're a very young company here. This entire industry is very young. So uh, we're tiny compared to the giants out there, the you know, the, the massive banks. But we're we're gaining traction really quickly. Um, we started out a few months back uh, doing a project here and a project there, maybe one a, a month. And now we're up to you know a good six to twelve projects a month already, um, and we're actually uh, uh, moving towards twenty, thirty projects a month uh, very, very quickly. In fact, last month in June we funded over one point six million dollars worth of loan, uh, which was more than double any other month uh, previous to that. This month we're on pace to do over two million dollars in loans, um, and uh, we're getting uh, oh, more than ten to fifteen million dollars a week in. Funding applications, and uh, next month uh, we hope to be you know, uh, close to the three million dollar uh, range per month. Um, so we're, we we expect to be doing here uh, actually within the next six months a good five to six million dollars a month in, in in loans. And because we're a non-traditional uh, you know, lending company, uh, we're able to reach those developers that have traditionally had a hard time. Getting access to capital, uh, you know, as most of uh, Boston uh, uh, developers uh, out there know, it can be a royal pain to try and get funding from a bank, especially in the time frame you need it. Some of these properties that are coming up, um, and uh, a lot of these developers have earnest money down on properties that, that they'll lose if they don't uh, move quickly. And uh, so sometimes they're taking a risk. And with us, we can move. You know, we can close a loan in as little as seven days. Even faster in, in, in some cases, and uh, because we focus on the experience of the developer and the quality of the project itself, you know, how good that plan is, and how good that property is, and how good that property is going to become, and we're able to operate in ways that the traditional um, uh, lenders, such as, as banks, just aren't able to operate. Uh, so we're able to reach a great deal more people, and we're able to bring those quality products out to the crowd and, and let them be a part of that, which just hasn't existed before. Great, that is that is amazing. So the traction is there. Uh, let's just go to the couple of the questions here, um, and this one's an easy one. Uh, can you repeat the website? the uh, The website to uh, Patch of Land is patchofland.com. www.patchofland.com. Uh, another question from Bruce Mayberry. Sorry I'm a bit late to the meeting, but has the SEC actually given the Title III rulings yet the go-ahead? Uh, would you like to answer that, uh, Jason? For, uh, is no, the equity crowdfunding currently operational? It actually is not yet. Um, so Title III is not in place yet. We, we have been expecting it for quite some time. Um, you know, depending on how much you believe them, industry insiders are expecting it later this year. Um, and we're hoping to uh, uh, to see some movement forward on that. Uh, you know, just to be honest with you, uh, uh, Title III is going to be a little bit difficult um, for some platforms to work with, simply because there's so many protections put in place for running credit that it almost makes it uh, um, uh, too onerous, uh, too difficult for, for some platforms to um, to make a project happen. Um, but that being said, you know, Regulation A plus is coming out too, also expected later this year, uh, hopefully. And Regulation A plus will, um, in our opinion, um, be much, much more easy to work with, and will still let us work with unaccredited investors too. So we can truly open up these projects to everybody, not just the previous one. Excellent. And um, and just uh, I always I always like to repeat it because sometimes I feel, you know, we we've been in this uh, we we've been in it for a while. You know, your company has and, and uh, other companies. 
and, and again, I always like to summarize. Title Title Two is what Patch of Land is doing currently. So Title Two is Rule 506C. That is general solicitation of accredited investors, those making more than 200,000 a year or a million in net worth. Title Three, which was the gentleman who asked the question, is general solicitation of unaccredited investors, meaning anyone regardless of income will be able to invest in uh, in any business, not just real estate. It's any business. Uh, and same with Title II as any business. And then Title IV, which uh, Jason also mentioned, is a, is a mixture of both. It's a general solicitation of accredited and unaccredited, but instead of the limit of only one million that Title III has, Title IV actually brings it up, I believe, from five to fifty million. So there's a, the, there's a, lot, a lot of excitement on that too. Uh, in regards to when it's going to pass, there's also a lot of politics at play currently. Uh, so that's why I think it's being delayed a little bit. Um, the only place that I've seen Title III actually publicized in the government as to when, when it might be released is in the Federal Register, and I believe that actually says October 2014. Uh, based on what some people told me, however, is the Federal Register may not be the most reliable source, but it's the only government source that I see has so that has something published on it, so I, it's the only thing that we can go on. But for those of you in the Boston Rhea, I mean, think think of it this way. Um, you know, a, a lot of times in in a Rhea, you know, and, and I'm I'm a member of the Connecticut Rhea, uh, Connecticut Real Estate Investor Association. We go there to get educated, but a lot of times we um, it, it's hard for us to pull the trigger on an investment. We we do our analysis paralysis, education paralysis. Uh, but what I believe crowdfunding is going to do is it's going to be a great way for investors to invest uh, and spread the risk among multiple investments in real estate. So it's it's going to allow almost anyone to invest in real estate eventually. And I know Patch of Land is considering Title IV as part of your platform, meaning would, would you also consider the unaccredited investor side when Title IV becomes uh, operational? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I mean, the, the holy grail of crowdfunding is to be able to, to bring these type of projects to everybody, uh, not just the wealthy. Uh, so I, I believe most of us actually out here in this industry are, in one way or the other, hoping to, you know, to uh, work with unaccredited as well. Um, and there's still options, you know, even beyond that in a, a true peer-to-peer -peer regulatory environment of still working with, uh, um, with unaccredited investors, and we're looking at those options as well. Uh, you know, I am confident. Uh, that within you know the next uh, 12 to 18 months here we'll be able to work fully with unaccredited investors. Great. Uh, another question here from Pete uh, Kuchabe, PhD. Um, are investment dollars tied to a particular project, or are they invested into a general debt fund? So yeah, in, with our platform, they're they're tied to a particular project. So if you invest in that project that we just showed you there in the, in the Florida Keys, you would get the rate of return that's been advertised on that project. Uh, you know, it's it's uh, tied to that particular note, that particular loan written to that particular developer. So we don't currently use a fund mechanic yet at this point that's a collection of these different projects. But we are looking at that in the future. Uh, those will be explicitly uh, uh, defined. Um, but right now you can choose the projects that you like. Uh, ignore the projects that you don't like, and, and you'll see your returns based upon the performance of the, of the ones that you do invest in, in any individual project. Great. Uh, Jess, um, I, I have one more question to... Uh, actually, I have one more comment here, and then I'll, and then I'll turn over to you if you have a question, too. Uh, actually, this is more of a comment. Yeah, Frank, uh, Frank Spaulding uh, from CrowdFundMe, he just says, Title Three and Title Four. woohoo! <laughs> He's excited Everybody in the industry is watching that closely and hoping we have the same reaction too. <laughs> Absolutely. So, <laughs> so that's good. He's a you know Frank. Frank's a good guy from Crowd Found Me. He actually did a recent article on Patch of Land as well, uh, and it was a great article on, on you guys. Um, so yeah. So Jess, uh, any any anything like that? Yeah. Um. Yeah. I have a question. So, make pretend I was an accredited investor, which I'm not, and I wish I was, so I could use your platform. But <laughs> one day soon. <laughs> um. So there's so many different platforms out there. Can you name like maybe for some advantages of using your platform compared to all the other ones? 
Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, so we focus specifically on debt. Um, so we are a short-term high-yield platform. A lot of the other platforms uh, try to be kind of masters of, of everything. Uh, they do equity um, uh, crowdfunding. They do debt crowdfunding. They focus a lot on uh, commercial properties. They focus a lot on longer-term projects as well. Um, yeah, we Our particular niche is in the high-yield short-term projects. So we're, we're dealing a lot with those individual developers that have uh, you know, some single-family residents or uh, some small multifamily, some small commercial as well that they intend to um, move forward with very, very quickly. Uh, so our investors are able to see a return very, very quickly. And because it's debt-based, it, it, in my opinion, is, is less speculative than some of the equity um, uh, transactions. You know, we mm -hmm. sign a loan with a particular developer at a particular rate, and we provide you know, uh, uh, that rate to our investors. Um, so that they've got the, um, the, the confidence of knowing that unless something terrible happens with the, the property, and we do have uh, you know, backup plans in case that happens, but it, 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 unless something terrible does happen, they're going to get that specific stated rate of return. Um, and uh, not only that, but as a, um, you know, a debt project, if something terrible does happen, that uh, they're generally paid out, out first as, as the debt holders. Um, and so when we move into a liquidation scenario, we know that it is secured by the property itself. Now again, nobody wants that to actually happen. You know, we, we haven't had any defaults or anyone even come close to a default at this point. You know, we use professional, high quality borrowers uh, that are real estate professionals. But in the case that it did, you know, it is backed up by, by the actual property itself. Um, you know, there, that, that's not to say that there aren't other great portals out there. You know, Realty Mogul, Fundrise, uh, those are, are huge, great uh, portals, and they do a really good job. Uh, but they have a particularly different focus than we do. Um, and we're very good at what we do. Um, we're very focused on what we do, and, and it allows our investors to be very comfortable um, you know, with, with what we're actually offering. We specifically put our money you know, into the deal ahead of time. So we're not putting junk on the platform. Um, you, know, you, you don't have to worry about uh, you know, us putting stuff up just to put something on the platform because we've actually funded it. We put hundreds of thousands of dollars in that deal because we've looked into it and we've determined um, you know, that, that, that it's a good deal in, in our opinion, in our judgment. Uh, so we funded it ahead of time and, and um, we put our money where our mouth is. We, we're taking on that risk and, and uh, it's essentially co-investing along with you. Awesome. As to short term, is that typically like about a year? You think they would get yeah, paid most out? of our projects are written at a year. Uh, though honestly, at, at this point, the average is four to six months. Four to six. Oh wow! So developers really like that because they're uh, they're able to, to move on to a new project and get funding from us. Almost all of our developers come back to us for uh, for additional funding. Our investors really love it because they're able to see returns monthly and get their principal back uh, fairly quickly for a high degree of liquidity. Yes. Um, and to, to see that it's working, actually. And if they want to, they can withdraw it at that point, or they can put it into um, you know, a new project and just roll it over. And actually, the vast, vast majority of our investors simply roll it over into a new project, and uh, that's been working out very, very well. Yeah, nowadays, it's very, very difficult to get such high return in such a right. short period of time. So. Yeah, not only that, but a high rate of return that's actually backed by something real. <laughs> it's yeah. not some sort of speculative business plan that may or may not work out. It's... You know, it's, it's backed by an asset that you can go knock on the door. And you can see mm -hmm. it. It's a real thing. And that's, uh, that's one of the most appealing things of the parts of, of, of this investment strategy, this, this asset class, is that it's all underpinned by, by something that's solid and real and, and you can touch. Awesome. Excellent. And uh, we have another great question here, too. Um, and uh, it says, this is from uh, Dickens, Pierre Lou or yeah, Dickens, Pierre Lewis, uh, what level of experience should an investor have to access your platform? And, and by investor, I believe he means a developer or an operator. So what what kind of a track record should a operator have uh, in order to be uh, approved? And uh, is Doug still with you? I'm not sure if he's still with you. Actually, yeah, it, it, excellent. This will be, uh, be good for you, Doug, to answer since you're the underwriter. So what... What level of experience should an invest should a real estate developer have in order to be approved uh, on your platform? Well, we do, we we definitely don't want uh, uh, first time de uh, developers. Um, <clears throat> we are actually trying to uh, 
uh, put together a um, we're in the working stages of, of trying to put together a um, mentor program through uh, the National RIA, uh, where an inexperienced developer can work with a more experienced mentor um, and help them uh, uh, with their experience uh, to help um, uh, provide a level of probably just provide a level of expertise uh, that they may be uh, lacking. Um, so we're, we're, we're in, the, in the works of developing something uh, with that, uh, trying to find the, the, the right projects to start off with with that. Uh, that being said, uh, we do want uh, developers with experience. Um, and it really, uh, a lot of it does depend on um, uh, their background. Um, we have a lot of developers who have done, who have been uh, flipping properties for uh, a couple of years, but they've been a realtor. Uh, for 10 years, uh, or a property manager, or a combination of there, uh, we, we look at your your, your whole experience uh, and what you're bringing um, to the project uh, as, as well. Um, uh, so we, it's again, we, we, we do a lot of uh, make sense underwriting and look at the project as a whole. Um, and we will, if we do have a, a what we feel is an inexperienced developer, we will. Instead of just shutting the door on them, we will say, do you have somebody who's a mentor to you, somebody who can uh, come to the table with more experience and help you uh, to gain? And in, in, in essence, is that what that is doing is helping us um, with our investors, because our investors are the ones who are going to be investing in the property. And they're going to want to see some experience or, um, with, with the developer. Um, so that, that's why we, uh, we kind of keep a sharp eye on that. Um, but allow for opportunities um, with more experienced developers to help out. Great, and, and actually, I uh, I like that I like that idea of a mentor program because a lot of people who are involved in a in a real estate association they may be there for the first time, and so you know if 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 they alone don't qualify because they are a first time investor. This mentor program might help them build a track record, or it might help them get someone to vouch for them. Uh, th there could be some sort of mechanism where they where they build a track record off of the experience of others, and uh, and and that's uh, that's brilliant. The the whole mentorship, uh, especially if you're teaming up with the National RIA, uh, this is that that is a brilliant uh, brilliant thing and, and a great benefit to the developers. Yeah. I'd like to take credit for that, but that was actually our marketing director <laughs> out of PIA. Thought he, that up. <laughs> he's extremely brilliant as well. Your whole team is, is amazing. Uh, Thank but, you. Um, it's great, though. It's great that it's great that you guys are doing that. Um, because, because I, I believe that's the future too. I, I think uh, I think a lot of RIAs are going to morph into many many uh, investment groups where where they. They actually invest together. Uh, I, I can kind of see that as maybe a new model. It, it would be almost like a, you know, the the RIAs become crowdfunding associations as well uh, because it's just going to be such a big uh, a big movement and it's already happening. Is that what you see as well, Jason? Kind of a yeah, absolutely. We've seen an enormous amount of interest from the the uh, di different real estate investment associations that are actually out there. Um, I mean, beyond just the you know the surface value of being a new channel for capital formation, too, um, you know they can see the direction that this entire industry is going. We're all moving towards you know kind of a democratized uh, uh, process of, of, of making these type of things happen, where communities can reinvest in their own communities, um, investors can reinvest in their their own neighborhoods, and, and that's not going to be long in coming, where you know, we can really work with just about everybody, and then the. Uh, um, the, the different RIAs out there uh, see a huge value in kind of being a front line with this. So we've been in constant contact with uh, quite a few different entities out there, um, you know, besides the national RIA, the uh, Boston RIA, and uh, um, uh, different local chapters. And we're trying to do our best to make sure that we support them um, as much as possible while still being responsible to our investors. We're still being compliant with uh, you know, the SEC regulations, both now and here in, in the future. Um, but that mentorship program, I think, is going to be a really good uh, program moving forward, uh, where we can actually 
provide the credibility, provide the experience, and provide the resources that, that a veteran developer may actually have and still be able to work with uh, a new developer that has a great plan and has a great idea. It might be a smart, talented individual, uh, just hasn't quite been able to break into the industry yet. And by pairing uh, up those two different uh, uh, um, groups, we can, we can still make great projects happen. Perhaps those individuals can be Jessica and I one day. You never know. <laughs> yeah, we'd love to. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, so that's interesting. And um, I, uh, I'm just trying to. I had a great question and I lost it. That always happens to me sometimes. <laughs> um, Jess, do you have another question for now? While I try to think of it. Um, I mean, I don't have anything in particular. I guess if you guys want to talk about what you think about crowdfunding in the future, like how do you see it evolving from today? Uh, I mean, we, I, I look at it uh, as you know how the stock market itself evolved from kind of backroom deals and ticker tape to being you know E Trade and, and the, the different online exchanges. You know, it, it's or how Barnes and Nobles and Borders, you know. Uh, transition to Amazon in, in a more cynical sense, I suppose. Um, in the end, we're, we're bringing a level of transparency, bringing a level of accessibility, bringing a level of openness to investment, especially in real estate. And, um, and that just resonates with people. Everybody out there is on some level, uh, no matter how small, they, they want to own a piece of this planet. They want to own their own patch of land. And, and we, we're in real estate by bringing these investments um, to the whole crowd, and it allows that to happen without having to be a millionaire or a billionaire previously, or having huge amounts of experience, or having huge amounts of connections. We can actually still make that happen. You can own, you know, part of the Trump Tower somewhere. You can, uh, you know, help a, a real estate developer turn a neighborhood around, or uh, turn a, you know, a, a, a derelict church into a, a, a woman shelter. Uh, there's an enormous range of different opportunities that exists out there. And um, that, that just hasn't been possible in the past. And honestly, in my personal opinion, we're actually past time for this. This should have been happening, you know, five years ago or, or, or more. But we're at the point now where the political will and the, the technology and, and just the regulatory um, environment has all kind of come together to make this happen. And so it, it's going to happen very, very fast. I think a lot faster than what most people would really expect. And this isn't going to be a slow uh, plotting incremental change. It's going to be a sea change that happens you know, relatively overnight. And, and we're already seeing that here. This is just completely taking off. And from, you know, we're, we're in discussions with some of the, the really big power players that, that are out there. They're, they're seeing this happen um, and they're, they're wanting to get in on it themselves. So once you actually start getting a you know, combination of the capital and the money that's actually out there, combined with the political will, combined with the regulatory compliance that, that exists now that makes this possible, and then combined with the huge amount of interest that's out there from everyday people, from millions of people that, that are out there that, that uh, want to take control of their own finances or want to actually help their own neighborhoods or want to help their own communities or make an actual change you know, uh, through their own dollars. All of those things are coming together right now and it's causing just a you know, massive change in, in the, this, the entire investing, the entire real estate uh, world. Absolutely. If any industry is going to pick up with crowdfunding, I think it's going to be real estate anyway. And you can see it right now happening. Yeah, right. exactly. I think real estate and the investments that, that have existed uh, or that have um, happened through crowdfunding, uh, real estate has been by far the, the, um, the largest uh, beneficiary. Um, I think almost as much as pretty much any other channel combined. Not quite, but it's getting there, um, and, and that's it existed because it's you know it just lends itself so well to to crowdfunding, and it's mm -hmm. it, it's easier to make the case for for real estate again because it's a real asset. It's mm -hmm. actually out there. It's not just a plan, um, and, and because syndication in real estate has been happening for a very long time, just offline in dark, smoky back rooms, and, and now all we're doing is, is we're basically building a better uh, mouse trap along with having a whole paradigm shift. We're, we're making something that, that has proven to be lucrative for a very long time happen in a much, much better way, online, mm -hmm. and quickly and transparently, and you can do it from your couch and your pajamas if you want to. Exactly. Instead of a few pair of eyes, there's hundreds of pair of eyes in that one deal. 
So we get right, exactly. much more validation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and, and that added credibility. In fact, we see that a lot on our platform too, is where a, a deal might take off a little bit uh, slowly, but then once some of our investors see that the other, the rest of the crowd is is starting to invest in it as well, there's that validation, that there's credibility there. All of a sudden, the last part of that deal just fills up in a huge rush because everyone wants to get in. Mm -hmm. um, so the wisdom of the crowd, even if it's kind of an intangible, unconscious thing, is there. You know, we're, we're seeing that uh, um, on almost every deal. Great. Uh, we actually have a, a, an excellent question here. Uh, this is from Eric Kaufman. Eric Kaufman is with Acumen Business Advisors, a very brilliant advisor. He's actually helping us here at Reality Crowd TV. Uh, he, uh, his question is, to facilitate and assist first-time developers, will you provide a developer for hire to mentor the first-timers? And maybe that'll be something for Doug to answer. Uh, is Doug still there? Or? Yeah. I'm still here. Excellent. So, uh, yeah, so, it is, so this is actually interesting. Uh, maybe you would have an all-star cast of, of developers in different cities maybe you got a bird dog who's never done an actual deal on his own and suddenly they're matching up with the, the developer. You're, you're making the bird dog system a kind of a social network with the developers to say, bring me the deal, I'll give you the track record. Is that uh, something that you might consider? Um, something we might consider would be something to, uh, that we'd have to set up. Um, I think the, the program that we're really kind of... Uh, uh, looking to pilot right now would be through the the, uh, the national uh, RIA uh, group uh, and using the mentors that they already have. Oh, okay. um, and the people you know the more experienced uh, investors to work with within their local chapter, working with uh, the less experienced guys. So to kind of go along with that as well. Um, you know, we don't want to create any conflicts of interest where we're simply paying somebody with experience to kind of provide this false front for somebody that may not have uh, experience. If we're going to do a mentorship program, we want to make sure that the professionals are actively involved with the, the, um, the less experienced uh, developers. We want to be able to provide that guidance. We want to provide um, you know, be able to check off exactly what needs to be able to happen. If there's a building or a construction plan that goes into a particular property, we want somebody that's done it 50 times before to be able to take a look at that and be able to say, hey, this does make sense. This is going to provide value to this particular property. Or, uh, but perhaps more important, this can provide value to this property that is in excess of the cost of actually doing it, which is one of the biggest challenges for, for new developers. We are looking at several different ways to be able to get New developers involved, um, and to to get the deal flow to us that you know the, the new developers can bring, because a uh, you know, great many of these new developers have amazing properties, amazing opportunities. We just want to be able to provide them with a way to process that opportunity, to pull off that opportunity, um, you know, with the help of some some strong guidance and strong experience. And that's what we're working to put together right now. And we're, we're not at that point yet. Uh, we're, we're seeing some huge opportunities and some huge help from the, the, the RIAs. Um, and, and we think that that's something we can do fairly quickly. It's just not quite yet. Absolutely. Great. So thank you for that question, Eric. So we have about uh, two minutes left. And here's, uh, here's another uh, comment from Frank Spaulding. Uh, to go one step further on Eric's question for Patch of Land, will there be some form of system for realtors or developers who start bringing projects into you for other people, a way to help them speed the process for you and the person doing the project. Um, so I, maybe this is more so, is there some sort of compensation, a referral program for people who bring deals to you? Uh, is there anything that, that yep. kind of happens there? Yeah, so we, we do work with brokers as well. We do have a program uh, um, situated around that. So if you're a broker or you have an opportunity that perhaps you're not involved in, but but um, you'd like to refer a developer or a professional, um, absolutely reach out and, and uh, touch base with us. Um, we would be ha very happy to work with you both now and in the future. Um, and for developers that um, have worked with us uh, quite a bit in the past, we are putting programs into place to, uh, as well to speed the process. So we are looking at lines of credit for particular uh, developers that have been able to prove themselves and, and be able to 
to show that um, um, you know that they know what they were doing. We would still do underwriting, obviously, on the property itself, but there probably isn't quite as much underwriting that needs to be done on the developer themselves if they've worked with us five or ten times in the past. Um, so we can expedite the process, um, you know, and, and uh, we, we are working on programs for that as well, um, and, and that's. I, I think can be pretty standard in different areas of, of this industry as well, to where you have a knowledgeable, repeat developer that's proven themselves to be able to just have a good business relationship with them and provide that capital in a more upfront way. Again, it's our capital that we're putting up front, and, um, so it, it would be us taking that risk, and then the, the individual um, investors after we, when we go out and crowdfund it can make their decisions on the back end. But if we like that developer, we like that project, we can make that project. Great, and um, we're we're just about out of time, but I'll I'll give uh, both of you over a patch of land just a last word. So we'll give Doug a last word. Uh, just Doug, you know, uh, you know, thank you for joining us, and um, and yeah, you you get a last word. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, last word is um, you know, tell your family, friends, and coworkers, and and uh, fellow investors about patch of land. Uh, feel free to take a look at the site, uh, go through the site, get a feel for how we do business, uh, the type of properties that we're looking for, and certainly if you have a property that is uh, uh, potential, uh, please submit it. Um, we look at everything that comes through, uh, we respond to all of the uh, phones that are submitted, it's an easy process, um, and uh, we're here to help support you, the, the investors. Uh, so bring some bring some of the Boston properties over. I want to see some <laughs> familiar uh, landscapes. <laughs> awesome. Thank you. Great. And Jason? Uh, so kind of going along with what Doug said, thank you, first off, for all of your time today. And uh, please, by all means, feel free to reach out and talk to us directly. If we haven't answered all your questions or something comes up, give us a call. You can speak with me at, at any time, day or night. During the week or the weekends, I'm, I'm always working. <laughs> uh, so give us a call here and, and ask to speak with me, or you can ask to speak with Doug. Um, you can actually speak to some of our current developers if you'd like to and get uh, tips from them. Uh, they're great people, and they, they like working with uh, uh, new folks as well. There's a lot of relationships to be had there, and, and uh, yeah, I absolutely encourage you to, to give us a try. You know, if, if we can't help you now, we'd love to help you in the future, and, and we'll do everything we can to make that happen. Excellent. Then, uh, Jessica, last word from you. Um, I just want to thank you all for joining us. Um, I know that I met a lot of members of Patch of Land, and they're really just great people, and that's really important to know when you decide to use a certain platform, because they're not just good at what they do, but they're really just great people in general. So take that in consideration, and thank you, all the viewers, for joining us again. Have a good night. Yeah, you, you guys are just much nicer than uh, than Morgan Stanley and uh, you know, Paul <laughs> That's our goal. <laughs> Be nicer yeah. than Morgan Stanley. It's on the wall. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So, great. Well, um, I want to, again, I want to do a special thanks to uh, Patch of Land uh, from patchofland.com. Uh, thank you again for joining us. I also want to say thank you to the Boston Aria chapter and all the members watching this evening. Uh, we're very uh, grateful that uh, that we could partner with your with your RIA. Uh, we hope to come visit you soon. And uh, and thank you, Jessica, as always, for being the host with the most, the hostess with the most. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, until next time, everybody, dream it, believe it, achieve it. Thank you.